today's topic it is the electric field due to an infinitely long straight uniformly charged conductor by using gauss law so here let us consider an infinitely long straight charged wire just imagine this is the one infinitely long charged wire of linear charge density lambda so uniformly charge distributed so why here we are taking positive charge only why not negative charge means we can consider any type of charge whether it is a positive charge or negative charge doesn't matter just if you change the magnetic uh, uh, charge sign the positive means the electric field lens is radially outwards and the negative charge means electric field lens is radially inwards so what is linear charge density means the charge per unit length the charge per unit length that is called linear charge density of the given wire now here just imagine a gaussian cylinder of radius r and uh, length l see this gaussian surface this is one gaussian surface here of radius r and length l just we can make it as a dotted lines so it is a imaginary three dimensional surface radius it is r and length it is l due to this positive charge the direction of electric field is radially outwards so that i'll mention here uh, first before that the gaussian cylinder has three surfaces so two is circular surfaces plane circular surfaces bottom and top and another one it is a curved surface in between the two circular surfaces another one it is curved surface so in this the direction of if we consider a small area element on this curved surface here so what is the direction of area element it is always radially outwards and due to the direction of electric field positive charge the direction of electric field it is radially outwards and if i consider the small area element here on this bottom surface circular surface the area element is radially outwards means here i showed the downwards and due to the positive charge the direction of electric field it is radially outwards if i consider one more circular surface at the top surface circular small area element at the top circular surface the area element it is vertically upwards and the direction of electric field it is radially outwards so if i consider these circular surfaces two circular surfaces one and two so in these two circular surfaces electric field and area element both are perpendicular to each other so that means the flux through these circular surfaces must be zero because both are perpendicular to each other so phi1 is equal to phi 2 is equal to in e d s cos theta so in the bracket we will mention here theta becomes 90 degrees theta means angle between electric field and area element so cos 90 it becomes 0 so that means flux phi 1 and phi 2 is equal to 0 and what is the flux phi 3 through the curved surface electric flux
through curved surface. So it is phi 3 is equal to integral eds cos theta. So here in this case theta it becomes a 0 degree cos 0 it is 1. So phi 3 is equal to integral eds and in the brackets we'll mention integral ds means area of the cylinder that is the 2 pi r l. So if I substitute here phi 3 is equal to e 2 pi r l. Then what is the total flux? Total flux phi is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3. So that is equal to e 2 pi r l. This is the equation number 1. Now according to the Gauss law. According to Gauss law. So what is the total flux according to the Gauss law here? Flux phi is equal to Q by epsilon naught. This is the equation number 2. So from 1 and 2 LHS are equal. We can equate RHS. So from 1 and 2 equations. E 2 pi RL is equal to Q by epsilon naught. So we want the E electric field. So E is equal to Q by 2 pi epsilon naught R L. So here already we know this Q by L is nothing but lambda linear charge density. So if I substitute here lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught into R. So this is the electric field due to infinitely long charged conductor.